For anyone who doesn't know, the UK has a Equalities and Human Rights Commission. Now this commission is supposedly in charge of maintaining the protections for protected characteristics that are set forth in certain equality legislations that we have in this country. However, this current Tory government under Boris Johnson in 2021 has put a transphobe in charge of that commission and that transphobe wants to ban trans people from entering uh single sex spaces such as bathrooms changing rooms and like swimming pools and stuff like that um unless they have a gender recognition certificate now for people who aren't in the uk who don't know what a gender recognition certificate is or for people in the uk who also don't know what it is basically if you're trans you can um apply to the board who oversee the gender recognition stuff and if you're successful they'll give you like a certificate that allows you to get the like the gender marker on your passport and other ids changed to the correct one uh functionally how this has worked is it's really expensive to get one uh like you have to spend like i think it's like it was like 200 pounds per attempt um that is changing down to five pounds which might seem good but a pin in that. Um, also, you have to have lived in your chosen gender and stuff for two years, um, like fully publicly, full time, uh, no, you know, just flip flopping for safety reasons because, you know, it can be dangerous to be like out in public when you're early in your transition and then like fully pass as your gender that often. Um, and then also, there's you need psychiatric. Um, approval from two different uh therapists or psychiatrists um who actually say that you're transgender so we're now treating transgender um as identity as an illness because it needs to be diagnosed before you can get the legislation that recognizes you as trans with a certificate that recognizes you as trans um and then also it's done you have to just collect all this paperwork together that proves all this and send it off and you never meet these people, they never like get to visually assess you or anything like that. Um, they just like look at all that paperwork and most of the time reject you. Uh, which is why only 1% of the trans UK population have a gender recognition certificate because it's expensive, difficult to obtain and a humiliating process that is also a transphobic process because it says that your identity is an illness that you need to get Anyway, outside of all of that humiliation and embarrassment of trying to get one, it's also a government list that you put your name down on for being transgender. It is a list that this government, which you know, this government that put a transphobe in charge of the Equalities Office on purpose, knowing that they did that, will then have a list of people. And also, in order to, if they're successful, with this bathroom bill, then I will need to carry around that certificate in order to gain access to changing rooms, to bathrooms, to gyms, to anything like that. Basically, I will have to give my papers to someone before I can pee. Does that sound familiar to anyone? Does this maybe not seem like a slippery slope? And this brings me to a daydream I just had, or a day nightmare I just had. Uh, a day if you will. Uh, where I imagined going to a public bathroom and then getting clocked as trans by a bunch of cis people who, because of the recent um, legislation, have been embiggened to be more violent towards trans people, which always happens. That always happens whenever there's legis... Like, for example, back in the 70s, when a bunch of, when homosexual relationships were made consensual um, and legal, if you're above 21, uh, there was a spike in hate crimes because there's a bunch of, like, you know, publicity on trans, on gay men. <laughs> I need to breathe. So if this stuff passes, there's going to be a bunch more publicity. The country's media is already massively transphobic and hate crimes will spike. They will spike. Um, and so imagine if I go to a women's bathroom, get clocked, and then 
they decide to like say that I'm not meant to be there. I try to pee anyway because I'm desperate and they hate crime me. They beat me up, they push me to the ground and they like kick, try to kick me to death. Um, then I survive and, you know, the cis people in my life are like, you know, asking me what happened and all of that and I explain. And they're like, but you box, you know how to do self-defense. Why didn't you like defend yourself? Why did you just take it? And I would have to respond to them because if I defend myself, if I punch back, which I have legal right to do under the self-defense like stuff, then my assault will be used to justify further legislation against trans people. Because if I sit there and take it, no police officer is going to pay attention to like me getting beaten up. They're not going to do anything about it. And no like UK <laughs> mainstream publication is going to actually say, look, that hate crime against a trans woman. That's not how this country works. They hate us. So, but if I do punch back, the headline will suddenly become Transgender punches woman in woman's bathroom with the subheading <sighs> uh, Protection of women's spaces more um, necessary than ever That's what would happen So what we're leading to is a situation where I could be assaulted in, just for wanting to pee and like be beaten brutally and then not be able to do anything about it in the moment or afterwards because doing so might cause further harm to my community. This is the facts of trans history in Britain. It's a person is trying to like get divorced and like keep, a ha keep the house they live in or they're trying to like inherit money from like a, a parent who's dead now. Um, and then cis people around them orchestrate stuff to like make sure that like it's what whatever happens, whether they win their case or not, there's precedent in law to make it harder for trans people to then do stuff later. And I just want to reiterate, like we're in a country now if this bathroom bill passes, where I would be... It, <laughs> like, it's not hyperbolic, that idea of, like, getting beaten up in a bathroom. Like, I grew up in this country when queer bashing was just common. Like, I didn't go out of my house, like, because I lived on an estate um, after certain times of day because people always shouted gay boy at me and batty boy and... I knew that in under the cover of like twilight, they would beat me to death. That's this the facts of this country. If you don't know that, then I'm sorry. If you've been privileged enough to not realize that, I'm sorry. And oh, mm. I can't even get like parents, like my parents and stuff, to understand this. I can't get them to understand the amount of fear and tension that I'm under right now because I just like think that the government's good and I'm like oh then what's the Equalities Commission so they're clearly doing it for the right reasons right it's not like there's going to be some evil fascist in control of that commission who just hates trans people and wants us to die and wants us to all be on a list of uh, just a list of the government gets to have and enforce us all to have to use papers to go places to visibly out ourselves as trans people you know that thing that isn't dangerous to do at all it's not like early on in my transition i had to use my passport to go in to pubs because i looked young and need and got id'd and didn't have a driver's license and then multiple times uh <laughs> Bouncers said this is fake because it had an M on it instead of an F and they read me as a woman and so like this is fake and then What are bouncers supposed to do if they think an idea is fake is they keep it, but they didn't they gave it me back which suggests that <laughs> They don't think it's fake. They're just using it as a reason to bar, bar a trans person entry um, I, I just I don't I'm tired. I'm so tired.
we uh, I don't know what they are.